Hey everybody, welcome back to part three of the three part series on how we got pregnant. Uh, this video is going to be more along the spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. Basically, how we got through three years of trials with trying to get pregnant. How we made it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, during three years of battling, going through something that you know God promised you, um, and then you have all of these things coming at you at once, it can be very difficult. Yeah, it's, it's um, the three years, a lot of up and down, up and down, but through it all, like, we stay on this consistent timeline of keeping our faith intact. And staying, staying connected with our church family because like <laughs> pause guys we got a um a baby back here that's waking up from a nap and well she's in the middle of her nap she doesn't take she's a very light sleeper you guys like at night she sleep yeah i'm talking about you <laughs> Look at her smiling. She sleeps all the way through the night, but during the day, her naps, she will wake up in like five or ten minutes from falling asleep. Ready to go. See, I'm ready now. You ready? Alright, you on camera. Okay. So. I was saying how it was an emotional roller coaster ride, but like, and the doubt comes in, and then. And then all other like depression can come in. Yeah, um, for me, there was a lot of feeling like, there was a lot of depression and feeling like, why can't my body do what it's supposed to do? Um, you feel like a failure as someone that's going through infertility um, problems. Um, I, I know it's an awful word to say, but honestly, like that was truly, honestly, how I felt at the time. It was kind of like tons of women get pregnant all the time, and some people get pregnant and they don't even want their babies. And why can't we get pregnant? Like, why are we having to wait so long when we knew God had told us He was going to give her to us? Um, we, we knew that was a gift that was coming. We just had to get ourselves through those three years of waiting, being patient, trying to hold on to ourselves. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, the main thing that we grabbed onto first was our church family. Um, if you don't have a church that you're a part of, because I know there's a lot of um, churches out there that have hurt a lot of people, um, whether you are straight, gay, black, Mexican, Indian, I mean, there's no, there's churches everywhere that you can possibly have gotten hurt at. Mm -hmm. So we are blessed to be a part of a church that has just taken us in and we love every single one there. So if you don't have that, um, we hope that you can find that. Um, also, we have churches that um are our church they're they're sister churches there are sister churches in our network that are in all different states and then we also offer online so if you guys want more information about that please message us because we would be happy to direct y'all to whichever one fits your needs we can put you on the right path of getting connected with the right people yes yeah so being able to know that we had a support system that we could communicate with that there was always counseling if we need to talk to someone mm -hmm. um you know that they were literally just there for you if you needed them that was the best thing that i think could have been there yeah it just it just helped remove the doubt and know that this is something that we wanted, so hold on to it and and prepare and prepare yourself for the for the outcome. Yeah. Um, with infertility, 
um, pulling off of each other and trying to be there for each other was also another big part because um, it could be very damaging and hard for your relationship when you're going through this. Yeah. Yeah, just, just trying to pick the other person up that's down. You know, you're trying to stay strong and like keep, keep your relationship and your lifeline on track while one's dealing with something that's so like, just, what do you want to say? Like probably the most challenging thing Cole's probably ever been through. Just probably ever will go through, you know, just, I don't know, what do you want to call it? I, I'm just I, that I guess straight, straight I mean emotional like I've known Cole for 10 years and that and what we went through was the most emotional thing I, we'll probably ever go through I would say or I hope so <laughs> at least I hope it doesn't get any worse than that um I wouldn't wish it on anyone um I wish that everyone that wanted to have a baby in the world could have a baby because I mean I know the toll that it takes on you and like I would, I would totally do it all over again because she's worth everything to us. But um, it's just a lot. It really is a lot. And I mean, there there were times that with the highs of emotions and going through everything, that you can be nasty to your spouse, and you just need to try to refocus yourself. And if there are times where you're feeling like you want to lash out dive into the word and start reading your bible and talk to jesus and pray and you know start going that route instead of damaging your your spouse because that's basically what you're doing when you lash out at them and they're feeling attacked and then there's nothing that they can really do to make you feel better at that moment right um the biggest thing that helped along the way for us was going through our scriptures like having daily scriptures that we went through yeah, and pulling on that to to know that okay god's word says this so i'm believing that this is what's going to happen and um is, is a way to redirect your energy like yeah basically that's what we were doing we were just taking all our frustration and redirecting it into a positive way and like the that was that was like the only way that we got through it. Yeah, um, I actually have some of the scriptures that we went over. Um, so I'm gonna read those to you guys, so um, you can have them. And we'll also um, put the verse on the screen for you in case you need to write it down. And you don't hear what I said. Um, so one of the main ones that a lot of people I'm sure have heard and know is 1 Samuel 1 27 and it's for this child I have prayed and the Lord has granted me my petition that I made to him so with that I, I always took it as you know we are praying for this gift and God is going to give it to us he said he was going to give it to us he's going to give it to us and that just kind of helps reiterate what you're thinking and feeling and bring it back around to help you be positive in that time. Mm -hmm. um, so another one that I really loved was Romans 8:18, 8, and it's for I consider that the suffering of the present to me are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be. So with that, it's like right now you're going through something that is awful that is um a, a suffering you're going through a trial and you don't know how you're going to go forward but don't compare now to what is going to come what god is going to give you in the future um just just holding on and pressing forward and having faith and not comparing the two because if you just shut down and feel like this is never gonna change. This is what I have. I, I'm just gonna give up because there were times I wanted to give up. Yeah. Um, I mean, this the the last round. I told Nish that I was like, okay, if this doesn't work, I I can't do this anymore. Like I knew I was dwindling, <laughs> and I feel Aww. like God knew that I needed it at that moment. Like that was. <laughs> Don't cry, huh? 
<laughs> that was it. That was fresh. You like it now? No. Pull it together. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's a very emotional thing because it's just, it's so amazing to have her now mm -hmm. and know like everything that we went through. It was, it was all, it was all worth it. Yeah. All worth it. Okay. Um, I have a bunch, so we may just like list them all like out on, on the thing for you guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll put them down below so you guys can just see like the, uh, the ones that we went through daily. Yeah. Um, another one that we, uh, pulled from was Psalms 55, 22, and that is cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you and he will never, um, permit the righteous to move. So I, with that, I just felt like if you go to God and you tell him like and just give it all to him like lay it down stop worrying about it stop stressing about it he's gonna give you what it is that you need and when you need it um, the main thing was us trying to be patient, <laughs> patient. and realizing that our time is not God's timing Woo. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't that one's uh I think everyone struggles with that, knowing that your time is not the same as God's time. And then when you realize when he does give you something, you be like, yeah, yeah, that probably wouldn't have worked back then. So, he was right. Yeah, and when we tried the last time, I just knew we were pregnant. I just, I knew, I kept saying it to her, like, I knew. She's sitting up. She doesn't like her mouth wiped. I don't know why. Um, I kept telling her, like, I know we're pregnant. We're pregnant. We're, I know it happened this time. And I think she was just kind of going along with me, like, don't shake someone else's face. Like, just, <laughs> she said, she know, I'm, I'm with you, you know. Without even, like, physically seeing evidence there, which is what faith is, is claiming it before you can see it. So I'm just like, all right. But I truly, like, I just knew. I, I knew down deep in my soul that God had given us the gift that he had been promising us the whole time. Um, Cause, and when I say that, some people may be like, well, how did, how did you know God had promised you? Um, there were times where we would be at church and we would receive a message. It would be from someone that did not know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, had no idea what we were going through and they would come to us and deliver us a message from God and basically tell us to hold on that it was coming. It was coming, yeah. Um, so, your, t uh, your time of harvest is near. And you know, like those moments also happen um, when we were at a low point and we needed to hear that and I feel like we wouldn't have gotten that if we hadn't been in church. So, um, that just goes along into us you know being involved somewhere and i know a lot of people feel like being a part of <laughs> she she wants to chime in on this uh being a part of a church and going to church may not be important but it truly is um there may be things that you could have gotten being there that you don't get because you're at home so um, you can always open up the Bible. You can always worship God in, at your home, wherever. I mean, that's that's the joy and greatness of worshiping. <laughs> you have a, you have a lot to say on this too. She talks a lot. She, of course she does. She's like, I was up there while you guys were doing all this. <laughs> so, um, just just know that. If you haven't already thought about getting into a place of worship, that may be something that you should look into because it was really important for us. It really was. It was, it was, it was the, biggest, the biggest key to this whole process. It was, it was, it was, it was the, like I said, it was the biggest key, most important factor of are coming to us. Yeah. 
What's our faith? The faith size of a mustard seed. If you guys have not heard that. Um, that and, is, um, and the crazy thing is we just, uh, I just saw what a mustard seed looks like. Actually, like, I'm like almost 33 years old than that. You know, you hear, you hear the saying, faith size of a mustard seed. But do you actually physically see a mustard seed? It's, it's, it's mind blowing. So, I guess we can close it out right there. Um, oh, um, well, one other thing, I don't know if we said it, is praying. Did we talk about that? Yeah, we talked about praying. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, like, that is another thing, like, you know, get into your um, space that is clear of everything. Um, not just, like, praying to God on your way to work in the mornings. Like, actually spend some time with God and and invest your time with him and you can talk with him. Praying doesn't always mean asking for something. Right. I know I know we're talking about like this gift that we wanted, but sometimes we weren't always praying for deliver us from babies. Just praying get us through this or our patient like Cole said before or just um What? Um, not, well, there, I mean, you ask for things, um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you also need to be praising God and thanking Him for things and, you know, realizing that you have so much to be thankful for already and that this gift that He's going to give you is just an amazing addition to add to you. So, um, it's not just ask, 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 ask. Um, we made sure to praise Him and thank, thank Him God. and done and everything He's going to do. Continue to help put our energy into that, among other things in our in our worship side to just keep us afloat, to keep us going. Yeah. So um, I think that's it. Yeah. That's it. Uh, we're gonna close out the video um, if you guys are having any issues um, if you guys need prayer if you guys want to talk um, be sure to uh, go into you can comment down below if you feel like that or if you want to be private you can go on our Instagram and message us um, we'd be happy to pray for you or talk to you give you advice whatever it is that you are needing and it doesn't just have to be about infertility yeah. if you if you have any needs that you are needing help for please reach out to us we'll be here yeah so until next time until next time and always be blessed yeah. be kind make, make a, a difference, difference. Do, 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 do. say <laughs> peace out dude See you next time.